the Fame 2 salient features were announced this month. The general direction of Fame 2 is positive in terms of demand side incentives for two wheelers, public transport, and fleets. While the EV community is aghast that private electric cars are excluded from the scheme, there were more important questions regarding battery manufacturing that needs answering, and even those have been answered. In this episode of Plug-in India Musings, we talk about the Fame 2 scheme and also look at the mandates for local battery pack, components and cell manufacturing in India. In order to promote manufacturing of electric vehicle technology and to ensure sustainable growth of the same, the Department of Heavy Industries had implemented the Fame India scheme, Phase 1 that is, faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicles in India, from 1st April 2015. The scheme, which was initially up to 31st April 2017, had been extended up to 31st March 2019. The salient features of Phase 2 of the Fame India scheme, called the Fame 2, was announced in the first week of March 2019 which proposes to give a push to electric vehicles in public transport and seeks to encourage adoption of EVs by the way of market creation and demand aggregation. The total outlay for the Fame 1 was around 795 crores to rupees 895 crores. And the total fund requirement for Fame 2 is rupees 10,000 crores over three years from 2019 to 20 to 2021 to 22 supporting 10 lakh electric two-wheelers, 5 lakh three-wheelers, and 55,000 commercial or fleet electric cars and 7,000 electric buses. The objectives of Fame 2 are to create demand for EVs by offering incentives, create EV charging infrastructure, having special emphasis for public transport, especially electric buses, Three-wheelers and four-wheelers, incentives will only be applicable for commercial purposes. Two-wheeler segments will have focus for private vehicles. 2,700 charging stations in metros in the next three years. And establishment of charging stations in major highways. The biggest talking point here is that there is no incentives for individuals buying private electric cars. People are asking us this question almost every day. Our view is that it does not make a difference anyway. We have observed over the years, internal combustion engine based manufacturers have been inflating the price of electric cars. This has resulted in fairly low volumes sold as there is less demand for electric cars. The ICE manufacturers will continue operating in this mode even after Fame 2 is implemented. Our only worry is this might dent the confidence of honest electric car startups who want to launch affordable electric cars. We spoke to a CEO of an electric car startup company. He wished to remain anonymous and said the following. As far as my views on Fame2 as CEO are, Currently, we are in a little precarious situation as the ruling is very clear on private owners of two-wheelers getting subsidy and four-wheelers not getting any. Our overall board view has always been that we do not want to design a product with subsidy in mind. We are watching the space very closely and waiting for information. My personal view is that Fame 2 is well intentioned. And given that India cannot be China and subsidize a whole EV industry, the steps are in the right direction with clear goals of cutting oil imports as much as possible. Could India have done better? We could. But India has a hundred other problems to deal with too. India is counting on its innovators and dreamers to drive the change rather than throw money at the problem. As a part of the EV community, we should wholeheartedly support new ideas and solutions, which all encourage more people to join in. The details of the Fame2 scheme are still being worked out and they hope to have it ready by April 2019. We still have questions that need answering. Offering demand-side incentives is fantastic, but we feel that there has to be a clear policy in the following. Mention the structure of how the incentives will be distributed. Currently, there is no incentives for the manufacturers to keep the sticker price of the EVs low. 
We have observed many manufacturers artificially inflate the price of an EV to ensure high margins in spite of the subsidy. What if the schemes expire in the year 2023 and is not renewed? What if the scheme is pulled due to various reasons? Will this affect the EV industry? What supply-side incentives are provided to make lithium cells in India? Assume the industry sells 10 lakh two-wheelers by the year 2023, each with an average battery capacity of 2 kWh. That would mean around 20 lakh kWh worth of battery packs would have to be imported only for two-wheelers itself. By the year 2023, not even a single kWh battery is made in India. How will it affect the industry in the year 2023? There are many companies importing cells from China and manufacturing battery packs, but unless cells are themselves made in India, it will lead to the same situation that occurred in the year 2012. Back in 2010, the then UPA government launched the MNRE scheme which offered incentives for consumers for EVs. Due to the introduction of the policy, EV industry saw 200% growth in its sales. The organized players saw a huge growth in the market share. But on March 31st, 2012, the MNRE scheme was withdrawn, which resulted in over 70% fall in EV sales. Manufacturers faced closures of dealerships with around 250 dealers having closed their operations within three months of the announcement. This horrific scenario should never be allowed to happen. By the year 2023, the industry must continue to thrive without government schemes or support. The government seems to have answered this crucial answer of battery manufacturing too, by creating the National Mission on Transformative Mobility and Storage to encourage clean, connected, shared, sustainable and holistic mobility initiatives. The scheme encourages the following. Phased manufacturing program valid for 5 years till 2024 to support setting up of a few large-scale export competitive integrated batteries and cell manufacturing giga plants in India. A phased roadmap to implement battery manufacturing at giga scale will be considered with initial focus on large-scale module and pack assembly plants by 2019 to 2020 followed by integrated cell manufacturing by 2021 to 2022. Each phase of localization will be finalized by the mission with a clear Make in India strategy for the electric vehicle components as well as batteries. To read more about the National Mission on Transformative Mobility and Storage, the link is given in the description below. Other perspectives from Professor Ashok Junjunwala from IIT Madras, India. Fame 2 is a step in the right direction, but there are shortcomings. The incentives based on size of the battery is misplaced. This means a more efficient vehicle which uses a smaller battery gets less incentivized. It is not clear what will happen when swapping batteries, an important step recognized by most is used. For charging station subsidy, there is no attempt to define the business case for charging stations. Subsidy is to bridge a gap. What is the gap? For what kind of chargers? Will we set up chargers with no vehicles to use them? But overall, we think it is in a positive direction. But some corrections will be needed after elections. The proposed subsidy would be based on the battery capacity and that is rupees 10,000 per kilowatt hour. So, a Mahindra E2O Plus with a 11 kilowatt hour battery will get only 1,10,000 rupees subsidy. Whereas, a Hyundai Kona with say a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack will get 2,50,000 rupees subsidy. An Okinawa Praise electric scooter with a 2.9 kilowatt hour battery will get rupees 29,000 subsidy. We understand where Professor Junjunwala is coming from. Why should a small car that does so much by consuming less electricity and resources be supported less while large SUVs and other sedans with large batteries that consume a lot more power be offered more subsidy? On one hand, incentives based on battery pack size is a good idea. For example, this would encourage two-wheeler manufacturers add large battery packs for extended range, thus matching performance and range levels of ICE scooters. 
but at the same time an ice scooters say with a 1.4 kilowatt hour lithium battery pack under fame 1 got around rupees 22000 subsidy and now only will get rupees 14000 Also as professor Junjunwala pointed out there is less support for small electric cars that offer superior efficiency as shown in the chart which compares Indian electric cars versus global electric cars For our final words the EV industry needs to be self sustaining pretty soon any withdrawal of incentives should not affect the industry like it did in 2012 The focus should be manufacturing lithium cells and achieve a steady demand for EVs over a long period of time. We congratulate the government for launching Fame 2 and National Mission on Transformative Mobility and Storage. This shows strong commitment towards electric mobility and refutes theories from people who say the government is not doing anything for EVs. We hope to do a part 2 episode once we have more details of the Fame 2 scheme. Finally we thank Mr Ranjit Arya CEO of Artem Motors for sharing his views on this stay tuned thank you for watching our video please consider supporting plugin india at patreon the link is